Hello and welcome to this very special show from the American Center in New Delhi and uh, this program is being brought to you courtesy the US Embassy of in Delhi, the Indian Embassy in uh, Washington, Google, Google Hangout we are on and DD News, Doodarshan News India's national broadcaster and I am joined on this show with the Indian Ambassador in Washington, Nirupma Rao who is joining us from Washington, Nancy Paul in Delhi, the uh, Washington's point person ambassador in Delhi. Welcome to you both and we are going to take a look ahead, have the two ambassadors talk about the upcoming very important visit of uh, Secretary of State John Kerry who will be meeting his counterpart here in Delhi to take further the Indo-US Indo strategic partnership, the strategic dialogue. So welcome you both ambassadors, you ladies, much. a pleasure to have you. And if I can Thank throw you. to you first, uh, uh, Nirupma Rao, just because you're so far away. <laughs> uh, so what do you think will be the main talking points, the main issues which are likely to come up on the table? Thank you, Sanjeev. It's a pleasure to be on your program. First of all, I think it's necessary that we place this whole issue and subject in context. What we're going to discuss is the whole spectrum of the strategic global partnership between India and the United States. This, as you know, is the fourth strategic dialogue between our two countries. And as you just mentioned at the outset, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is going to travel to Delhi for this purpose, and he will co-chair the dialogue with our external affairs minister, Mr. Salman Khurshid. Now, this is a fully developed partnership. It's a multi-dimensional partnership. So, obviously, we will have a lot to discuss. Okay. And one major issue among, amongst the long list of issues which is there on the menu, Ambassador Paul, is, uh, is the issue of uh, higher education, cooperation in higher education, which may not sound so, so posh, if you may, or so strategic, but very important for the, for the two uh, big nations. I think it's uh, symbolic of our relationship in many ways. It started out with the people-to-people -people, uh, focus of researchers and students coming to India, more than 100,000, one lakh uh, Indian students going to the United States. So at that level, people-to-people -people are uh, forging the relationship. But what we've added with our strategic dialogue is a higher education dialogue in which we look at issues in, involving uh, cooperative research, uh, perhaps looking at uh, models for skill training in both of our countries and looking at ways that we can enhance uh, higher education in both countries. And before I go back to Ambassador Rao, just one more question. On a, on a more people to people, what concerns more to students? Will this mean more American universities opening campuses here or will it mean more scholarships for Indian students going for higher studies, maybe even more work visas if you may? <laughs> I think it has that potential, certainly working with the institutions that govern higher education here in India. Our universities are doing that. I'm constantly amazed as I move around the country to find that um, Yale has been here, Michigan has been here, uh, Illinois has been there. I'm hoping my Iowa universities uh, will look at this as they come out with the governor this fall. And so there are many, many examples and looking at cooperative programs to bring American students here as well. Uh, our universities are very, very pleased to welcome Indian students and to provide financial assistance where they can. Ambassador Rao, there is already a large, uh, perhaps one of the largest uh, from across the world apart from Chinese contingent of Indian students in the U.S. What more do you see? Do you, do you see more, more of the American universities coming to Delhi, setting up uh, their campuses here or, or something more than that, this education dialogue? As Ambassador Powell just mentioned, Sanjeev, education and our cooperation in education constitutes one of the pillars of the strategic dialogue. And the higher education partnership, as the name would suggest, focuses on university education and the prospects and potential for collaboration between India and the United States in this field. I definitely do see the numbers of Indian students in the United States go up. There are at this uh, given moment at least 103,000 Indian students who study here in the United States, and I mean all across the United States. Every university I've been to in this vast nation 
has its complement of Indian students. Most of them are graduate students, but the numbers of students who are engaged in undergraduate studies is also going up. As far as the U.S. universities coming to India, let me first of all say that we have had extensive collaboration in the field of education from the inception of this relationship in the early 50s, you know, soon after our independence. The Nehru Fulbright fellowships and scholarships, for instance, have been in existence for over 60 years and at least 16,000 Indians and Americans have benefited from this program. And today, every year, at least 300 students win fellowships and scholarships under the Nehru Fulbright Initiative. So let me just emphasize that knowledge and the acquisition of knowledge is so important for both our democracies. And I think the more we are able to open uh, the perspectives and the potential in this regard, our young people benefit and I always have emphasized wherever I've gone here in the United States and when I speak about this relationship in India people are at the heart of this relationship since we're democracies of the people by the people and for the people this is the way Fair it point. should be okay if I could just add yeah. one thing on this we'll also be announcing the winners of the most recent Obama Singh competition which is joint research projects a very competitive process of selecting the new winners and they will be announced um, during the higher education dialogue and we will be looking at a whole new field of community colleges uh, looking at uh, ways that this might enhance the, the skills development for young people in both countries and before if I, I really just, move on sorry yes, if I'm I back. may just come in Sanjeev on this uh, why the skill development aspect of our cooperation is so important is and I'm sure your audiences in India will be particularly interested in this you know we have a demographic dividend in India we have a the vast majority of our population is very young and uh, the skill development of millions of our young folk who are today in school and will be seeking prospects for further higher qualifications skill development and vocational training is also extremely crucial apart from the higher education prospects uh, that we are able to create because today uh, if we are to look at the requirements that we have to put in place for our young people we'll have to create many more universities many more colleges and within this the concept of community college education vocational training and skill development is extremely crucial so clearly a very key area from uh, from Absolutely. whether you look at it from Washington or Delhi's perspective. If we move move towards the more more strategic aspects of uh, bilateral or multilateral partnership between India and U.S., which everybody agrees now it's a special relationship, uh, only getting stronger. But the the atmosphere, in, if you may, atmospherics have been somewhat. Uh, in, in terms of headlines, I don't know how much in terms of diplomatic exchanges that you two will say. This whole snooping incident that India is number five on the, the American snooping list, is it really true? Are all these revelations which are making headlines the world over last week, Snowden? What, what do you have to say about that? I think one of the key aspects is to look at the unfortunate um, sharing that the United States and India have in terms of being the victims of terrorism and looking for the ways that we can work together to share information, to develop information to ensure that neither of our homelands are uh, attacked again. And this has been a, a key part of the strategic partnership that we have. And I think that will continue. Uh, the foreign ministry announced last week that uh, we have a cyber dialogue and this will be the location for uh, looking at our cooperation, ensuring that it meets the requirements of both countries. And we will continue that dialogue. As you might guess, it's a very technical one. It's yes. done by our experts. Uh, but it is looking at ways to make both of our countries safer to ensure that they cannot be attacked by terrorists again. Mm. Okay, that was a very diplomatic answer by, by uh, Ambassador Paul. But uh, Ambassador Rao, was there some concern expressed by the Foreign Ministry uh, here in Delhi to you? Did you convey it further in Washington? Because there was a lot of uh, things written around it even while the while the new delhi is rolling out its own cyber infrastructure policy framework this issue did come up here a, a, a lot in discussions and 
and in the print and television. Uh, well, Sanjeev, uh, Ambassador Powell just referred to the cybersecurity dialogue that India and the United States have. As far as the latest reports about uh, electronic snooping, as you call it, uh, and the uh, and the information that has surfaced in this uh, regard in the public domain over the last few days, uh, you have uh, have I'm sure listened to what the spokesman of the Ministry of External Affairs has had to say on this issue. Obviously, we have flagged some concerns uh, that uh, have naturally arisen in this regard as far as India is concerned with the U.S. side. This is a matter under discussion. All right. Can okay. I, I, yes, just please. Think, I think it's a, a mark of our two democracies. You comment on the degree to which it's been debated here in India. I can assure you, and I know that Ambassador Rao will back me up on this, that it has been the subject of incredible amount of a debate and discussion in the United States and will continue to be. But that's the strength of our democracies that we can uh, do that. We can also, with the two countries working together, look at ways to strengthen this part of the partnership. Fair, and fair I'd point. like to add, uh, Sanjeev, to that, to what Ambassador Powell has said, that you, know, uh, you have to also look at the uh, larger context of the homeland security dialogue that we have with the United States. And uh, the, the last meeting of the dialogue uh, was held here in Washington just a few weeks ago when our Home Minister, Mr. Shinde, came here and held discussions with uh, the Secretary for Homeland Security of the U.S. Administration, Ms. Janet Napolitano. And uh, the joint statement issued at the end of that dialogue gives you an idea of the wide gamut of issues and, uh, and uh, cooperation that we have within the ambit of the Homeland Security Dialogue. And that Which includes such issues. My next question. Which just brings me to my next question, that home, Homeland Security, counterterrorism, these are of course key areas of concern and mutual uh, interest and benefit to Washington and Delhi. Anything specific on the, on the menu for discussions? Any special agreement which you think will be signed? I think on this one, as Ambassador Rao mentioned, the dialogue was just held in Washington and we will be um, looking back at, at that dialogue, at the things that came up. And uh, I'm already working, as I know Ambassador Rao is in Washington, to look at how we make the follow-up. Uh, particularly, we've been looking at some of, I think there are six groups in this one, uh, that look at a variety of things. Uh, Minister Shinde had the opportunity to go to both Boston and New York uh, to look at some of the ways that we countered the, the Boston bombings uh, ap and to apprehend the two, uh, the suspect and, and his brother. Uh, also to look at some developments that have occurred in, Wash in New York uh, since 9-11. And these are examples of ways that we can continue to cooperate to see what technology, what information sharing uh, can enhance that. Uh, also training together and uh, using our mutual uh, law enforcement uh, agreements to make sure that we can prosecute those that are involved in this activity. And in fact, bilat bilateral relations between uh, India and the U.S. are so uh, intertwined, if you may, with the regional and uh, multilateral issues, Afghanistan, Pakistan, yes. Central Asia, all key issues. What And Indians have their own concern that somehow the U.S. Uh, may not fully take into board their interests and their considerations, while also realizing that the U.S. has its own implications and interests in this, this part of the world. I, so if we begin with Afghanistan. I think uh, on Afghanistan, it certainly will be a part of the strategic discussion. We have a strategic regional uh, discussion that is planned for both a small session with the two ministers, secretary and the minister also in the larger plenary, but it, it is, needs to be seen in a broader context of we have had two rounds and we'll have a third round of an Afghanistan, India, United States trilateral discussion of Afghanistan, but in addition a number of exchanges of uh, American officials coming to Delhi to brief our counterparts here on the developments in Kabul um, in Washington and in terms of our own policy and we anticipate another group coming soon after the strategic dialogue. So I think everyone recognizes that 2014 is approaching quickly. Yeah. Um, it is a significant year for the entire region, but particularly in Afghanistan.
particularly in Afghanistan, 2014 Ambassador Rao, the issue really is that while there will be this trilateral India, Afghanistan, US initiative or meeting, there is, there is a big section in, in Delhi which quite often feels that sometimes India's interests are overlooked. Do you share that perception? I think first of all what we must understand is that there is a level of candor, a level of openness, a level of transparency in the dialogue that India and Afghanistan, India and the United States conduct on our region, on the regional situation. And our trilateral dialogue between India, Afghanistan and the United States has certainly been marked by that level of candor and openness. Obviously, as a country in the region, as a neighbor of Afghanistan, India has legitimate concerns about the post-2014 situation in Afghanistan. We are, I think, quite legitimately concerned about that situation. What will the future bring as far as Afghanistan is concerned? We know from the past that this was a country that was subject to the, to the vicissitudes of extreme violence, religious extremism, Taliban rule, and I think everybody in the international community, particularly India and the United States, has a stake, a shared stake in ensuring that we do not have a regression to the situation as it obtained in Afghanistan before 2001. So the first priority is to seek a consolidation of the progress that we achieved over the last decade in Afghanistan and ensure that there is no slide back. And the second, of course, is to ensure that there is a stable, peaceful Afghanistan that is able to develop and realize its potential and is free from interference in its internal affairs from uh, other countries in the region. Anything I, I, yeah. Just add, I, I think I'm confident that Secretary Kerry is going to reiterate America's great appreciation for the role that India has played in pursuit of these goals which we share in Afghanistan, particularly the uh, very generous economic support and development assistance that's been provided in Afghanistan, uh, as well as training of some of the military officials here in India and working uh, in the Istanbul process and in the heart of Asia process to try to ensure that there is regional cooperation in developing uh, e Afghanistan's economy and supporting its democratic development. I think India's soft power, like the United States soft power, its example as a democracy in this part of the world, um, its ability to, to provide examples of ways to promote uh, elections and the role of women, uh, free trade economy, all of those are, are very positive examples that Afghanistan can draw from someone close in their region and we very much appreciate that role. If I can just ask one specific question <coughs> because this the larger, bigger picture, broad strokes uh, description is always very nice and quite it, in terms of diplomacy also serves its purpose. But on a specific question of Taliban and which section of Taliban, now Indians not everybody, but a large section of Indians think that there should be no negotiations with Taliban or if there is, India should also be involved. Is there any progress being made on that for post-2014? Like who all are being talked with in Kabul and is India on board there? I think there are certainly discussions as you're aware. Uh, Secretary Kerry has been very much involved in those. <clears throat> and I anticipate that that will be a discussion uh, as part of the meetings with uh, Minister Kurshid and, and the India team here in New Delhi. I think those developments, uh, Secretary Kerry described them as homework. Um, we're anticipating that people will have taken their homework seriously. I'm a former teacher. I expect them to take their homework seriously. And we hope that uh, we will see the results of, of that work. And uh, we believe uh, that we are in congruence with the Afghans. They have uh, seen this as a clear part of the process of ensuring the security and prosperity future of Afghanistan and we do want to support that. Obviously people have to be committed to democratic principles and to uh, the rule of law if they're going to participate in the future of Afghanistan as we all envision it uh, developing. Quite right. Homework, groundwork, uh, definitely uh, Definitely the right words, Ambassador Rao, and you, you talked about the right amount of candor there now which can be seen in India, US. In fact, uh, but still, 
will india's concerns are they being suitably taken into account or there is a there is a feeling of being a little left behind a little let down i don't believe there is any feeling of being excluded or being left behind india is a big country india is a, a presence and a force to reckon with on the global stage so uh, we approach this whole issue this whole dialogue with uh, with confidence and conviction as far as the taliban is concerned uh, as i said before sanjeev we've had uh, very bitter and unfortunate experiences in our own region about the the uh, manner in which the taliban conducted affairs within afghanistan before 2001 and there is very little to suggest that uh, we can afford to be sanguine about uh, uh, changes in the attitude of the taliban that hasn't happened as yet we still see a pattern of recurring violence within afghanistan almost every other day and uh, we have uh, as you are aware the london conference of 2010 did lay down certain red lines uh, on the basis of which uh, discussions with the taliban could be carried forward or a solution sought and this included respect as ambassador paul said for the rule of law for the constitution for democratic principles and for giving up violence and terrorism and also ensuring that the situation concerning afghan women did not deteriorate in any right. respect you know this is the kind of medium that one while one wants to pursue this more uh, i'm afraid we'll have to just move on now iranian elections just got over i'm sure that's that will be another issue which will be of uh, mutual concern and which will be there on the talking table i'm sure that it will be uh, we you uh, see any changes with uh, respect to i i think it's much too early to know um we have had a very uh, common goal in in trying to prevent a nuclearized uh Iran of looking for it to observe its own obligations for the peaceful development of nuclear energy but not a weapons program i think this is an area where india and the united states have cooperated in the iaea in other uh fora and certainly an area where we can discuss um under secretary sherman who was here last month um is one of the negotiators for the united states and she was uh very clear in her discussions and in, in providing background on the most recent round and and our expectations ambassador rao you have anything to say on iran because uh, again india has uh, uh, has traditional and warm friendly relations with tehran and uh, like <laughs> they they are somewhat under strain because uh, because of uh, the us or un sanctions Well first and foremost what we tell the Americans is of course the the fact that is plain for all of us to see that Iran is a country in our neighborhood and we have had long standing historical ties important ties with Iran as far as the nuclear issue concerning Iran is concerned we have consistently stressed the need for full transparency in the manner in which Iran conducts its dialogue with the international community particularly the international atomic energy agency on these issues uh, there are questions that have been raised about Iran's nuclear program and they must be fully and satisfactorily answered that is the first point the second point of course is that uh, Iran has traditionally been an important source for the import into india of petroleum of crude oil uh, which is so essential for our energy security today of course because of the economic measures and sanctions that operate against iran it has become increasingly difficult to do trade with iran and uh, to to import oil from iran so that has obviously had its effect on our total basket of oil imports uh, from the rest of the world because the proportion of uh, imports from iran has had to come down uh, because of the constraints that operate but there is another issue concerning iran i think that we all should flag and that is also important uh, in our discussions with the united states about the regional situation and that concerns iran's um, position as a country uh, which neighbors afghanistan, afghanistan and which can which can provide 
transit into Afghanistan. As you know, conducting trade and... and I'm um, afraid, and Ambassador, we'll have to move on from this because no, time is just running. Me, <laughs> yeah, please. Let me just complete. The, yeah. the issue of Iran as a transit country to Afghanistan is also flagged by us and is also important in the context of our discussions between With India the United States. States. And Mr. Powell, the other issues, there are so many issues, uh, <laughs> but the civil nuclear deal, that needs to be brought to some kind of a closure. You think that will be done this time? Transfer of technology issues? This is a very long, ongoing uh, <laughs> process, and I, I have learned a, a great deal about how long patience. it is. <laughs> and, and some patience. Yes. Um, our uh, Westinghouse company and the NPCIL in uh, India are in the negotiations right now. Our two governments have been supporting that. We're working through a variety of issues. Some of them are very sticky. Uh, frankly, there's a, a desire to move forward a little faster on the part of the United States, but also a recognition that these negotiations around the world are lengthy. They involve great so sums of money. They involve uh, important sources of energy for the countries that are where the reactors are being built. But we do see this as a key part of the civil nuclear uh, agreement that was accepted by both countries in 2008. And uh, I know that Secretary Kerry is one of the prominent uh, American lawmakers who supported this uh, following a trip to India. He's going to be keen to see this progress and to see that it stays on track and that we can, in fact, bring our Westinghouse uh, modern technology to the energy needs of India and we think this is a very positive thing for both countries. Anything big uh, to be flagged uh, on the issue of energy, climate change, those kind of issues Ambassador Rao? Well as Ambassador Powell said about the civil nuclear agreement between India and the United States, both our countries are committed to the full implementation of this agreement and of course Ambassador Powell has referred to the discussions between Westinghouse and NPCIL in this regard which are moving forward satisfactorily. But I'd like to also place this all in the context of our energy dialogue because as you know for a developing country like India energy security is of paramount importance and the energy dialogue between our two countries is focused on a number of possible uh, energy sources and especially renewable and new sources of energy and we are looking the partnership between India and the United States on clean energy development has really progressed very satisfactorily and we are we are uh, conducting research and development into new, new sources of energy including second generation biofuels solar energy in which the United States uh, companies and technology has played a, a very constructive role in the development of of our solar energy capacity and also energy efficiency in buildings, another very important area for collaboration as right. also I, grid efficiency. If I could just add that one of the members of the delegation is going to be our brand new Secretary of Energy. He That's has right. taken office as the head of our Department of Energy and I know that in addition to all of the things that uh, Ambassador Rao has mentioned, he also knows that we will be talking about shale gas and our uh, process of looking at the applications which include Indian applications and uh, that is on his department's website mm -hmm. and so people can follow that. It's a very transparent process in terms of the timing and but I know that he will be discussing the whole gamut of energy issues while he's here and it is his first trip overseas. So. Okay. And this the and next question is I not just... simply, uh, yes ma'am. Just Sanjeev, sentence, I just want, uh, yeah, just in a sentence, the issue of uh, import of shale gas uh, from the United States is of great importance for India and it is a matter that we are discussing with the United States administration. Okay. Now this is not strictly bilateral because, but everything is just so interlinked. The, you know, India and Beijing had uh, some issues on the border uh, last month uh, and then the Chinese Prime Minister was here. After that, the Indian Prime Minister went to Japan and, and there was a certain reactions in Chinese media about that, not entirely very favorable. This entire Asia-Pac, Asia-Pacific regional equations, how do you see coming up in this strategic dialogue? I, I think it comes up in a couple of ways. Uh, President Obama just met with the new Chinese yes, leaders President, as well. Yeah. And so I think there will be an opportunity to share impressions and to uh, follow up on what is already an established dialogue. I think it's had four 
meetings already on East Asia issues um, and India, Japan and United States dialogue as well. And both of these have been very, very helpful in sharing information, sharing our views on developments in this part of the world. Our rebalance toward Asia um, includes looking at this part of the world in a, in a different way. And Admiral Locklear, who is our commander of the Pacific uh, Command, will be part of the delegation as well. Ambassador Rao, while, while all diplomats and foreign policy officials would actually like everything to be very hunky-dory, uh, but in, re in real world, there is this undercurrent of tension in this, uh, the dynamics which are playing out between these countries. So how, how do you move forward, really? I think as practitioners of foreign policy, what we try to do always is to ensure that there is a sense of balance and a preservation of equilibrium. And uh, China is a country that is a key foreign policy uh, focus for both India and the United States. And for India, since China is our largest neighbor, obviously the relationship with China has a certain importance, has a certain validity. I think nobody can deny that. The issue of our cooperation between India and the United States on what we call the Indo-Pacific or what Admiral Locklear, who is going to be a member of Secretary Kerry's delegation, says everything from Hollywood to Bollywood is, <laughs> is, is, uh, is an issue that uh, has, all, has figured a great deal in uh, the strategic dialogue and the dialogue between the defense establishments of the two countries because defense cooperation, as you know, is one of the pillars of the strategic dialogue and uh, that has also been moving ahead uh, quite visibly over the last few years. The um, dialogue with Japan, uh, India, US and Japan. time is running out. Please, if you can, make it brief. <laughs> the dialogue between India, US and Japan on regional issues has also acquired a dynamism and momentum which is very positive. Okay, great. Just I'll give you 30 seconds each. So what do you think should be the big takeaway from this strategic uh, partnership dialogue, really, Ambassador Powell? That this is a normal part of our relationship. It's a very strong uh, symbol of the growing relationship, its expansion, and it uh, is illustrative of Secretary Kerry's uh, dedication to this partnership that he has made time to continue and uh, its participation here in Delhi on schedule. Ambassador Rao, last word. The, strate the strategic dialogue is a very important occasion not only to review the progress that we have made in the relationship over the last one year since the last meeting was held, but also to set the tone, the direction and the pace for the future. And in that context, Secretary Kerry's visit to India, his first visit after he became Secretary of State, acquires a great deal of importance. Ambassador Nirupma Rao, Ambassador Nancy Powell here in Delhi and you in Washington, thank you very much. And like both the ambassadors, uh, what it pains to emphasize, you know, they, I think somewhere the idea is not to build up any great expectations before the visit trying to project it as a work in progress between two countries whose relationship uh, between the two countries has uh, steadily progressed and strengthened over the course of last decade or so. So no big theatrical announcements, no big civil nuclear deal, but solid, solid relationship is what the two ambassadors were trying to project. There. Thank you very much once again. Thank and you. Thank, thank you for watching the show. Thank you.